What a dramatic four plus hours near Roanoke, Virginia. You're looking at the shots right now of a suspected gunman, suspected of shooting two television journalists while they were conducting an interview live into their television morning program. In a police chase, police say he shot or he shot himself, and this is the scene where police are pulling that vehicle belonging to the suspected gunman and taking the uh, the uh, male into that ambulance. We do have a name for you. The suspect is Vester Flanagan, 41 years old, a former employee of that station, WDBJ7, where those two journalists were. Those two journalists were killed. One of the guests they were interviewing at the time, a woman involved, the executive director of a local chamber of commerce, was also shot as those gunshots rang out and was it taken to hospital and is in surgery. So, as I mentioned, in about five hours' time, two journalists shot live on the air. Another guest injured in that shooting and the suspected gunman pulled out of that vehicle in a ditch and taken to hospital, apparently still alive with a low pulse, but suffering from a gunshot wound, a self-inflicted wound. With more on all of this breaking news in Roanoke, Virginia, I'm joined by the city's mayor, David Bowers. Mayor Bowers, have you had a chance to catch your breath? Five hours ago, two reporters are on the air doing an interview, feeding into their morning show live, and shots ring out. What do you make of the situation? Oh, I'd say we're all very sad today. Uh, if you ask me how, uh, how you doing today, I'd say very sad, very just sickened by it all. Um, the shooting actually happened about an hour out of Roanoke, but the station, WDBJ7, is one of the big CBS channels in America and one of the best. And um, uh, we're, we knew these young people. They were bright. They were talented. Um, uh, we just, uh, it, it's just a sad day for all of us uh, here in the Roanoke uh, area. And sad because these two were just doing their job. They were out there with their camera, their microphones. They'd got a guest. They'd taken her out so they could get a, a pretty shot for that interview. And these shots ring out. What does that? Yeah. Is that a? I, I, I flip, I guess, like most people, between uh, in the NBC Channel 10 and the CBS Channel 7 here mm -hmm. in Roanoke to catch the news in the morning. And um, I was flipping through the channels, uh, but then I took the. <laughs> I took my dog for the walk or walk around the block, so I missed the whole episode live. Uh, I've seen it um, play out once on tape. It was horrendous, horrific. Um, and so I hope uh, that the uh, person who committed these uh, awful murders uh, is brought to justice. Speaking of bringing to justice, I do want to ask you about the response from your teams, your sheriff's department, your your local uh, law enforcement in this manhunt that ensued and where we are right now with that uh, victim who is apparently the gunman being pulled out of a vehicle and taken to hospital with a gunshot wound. What do you make of that response? Uh, it seems to be uh, just a, a, a terrific response. Again, the shooting occurred not in Roanoke, but in uh, either Franklin County or on the edge of uh, Bedford County at uh, beautiful, just beautiful, gorgeous uh, Smith Mountain Lake, a great uh, part of our uh, state. Uh, I know the sheriffs in uh, Bedford County and, and uh, Sheriff Overton over in um, uh, Franklin County, they seem to, uh, my report, uh, when I first got a report, uh, I understood that the uh, shooting had been in Roanoke. I uh, checked right away and was advised it was in in Franklin County. Mm -hmm. uh, Virginia State Police is a, a, a very professional organization. Uh, the governor was advised uh, early on about this uh, uh, terrible uh, shooting. And um, I'd say state police, local authorities, even the federal uh, authorities were all uh, right on top of uh, trying to bring this um, assailant to uh, justice. I also want to ask you, and when I was speaking with your vice mayor, sir, he you know, said this did not happen in Roanoke, and you've mentioned it a couple of times now as well. <laughs> yeah. are, are, you, are you kind of worried that people will no, associate uh, it, Roanoke this a, with this? No. Uh, I mean, I guess things like this could happen anywhere. Uh, but we knew these young people. They were out of Roanoke. Channel 7 is in Roanoke. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a great TV station, and these were fine young reporters. 
it's just an awful tragedy. No, this is part of Western. We're part of Western Virginia. The lake is just down the uh, road about a mo uh, about an hour. Um, so it's all part of our region. So what? Uh what are you? What message are you going to be sending out to you know people up in Canada who are watching and those across the United States as well who have been following this story about your little part of Virginia there? Well, we're we're in Western Virginia. Uh, I would say uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to the families of the victims uh, and to the uh, the folks over at uh, in at uh, our WDBJ uh, CBS affiliate. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we work with these folks. They cover us in uh, uh, in municipal government here in Roanoke, and um, it's just a very sad and uh, a sad day for all of us. I just did catch the um, the Channel Seven uh, noon news. I was uh, uh, absolutely astounded at how professional and, and um, serene they were in presenting the story about the uh, the, the killing of their own uh, colleague. Have colleagues. you have you called the station, Mayor? No, I've not. I've not had. Uh, no, my my phone was on the blink this morning, so I've had to get it reconfigured, and I'm just now catching up with all my uh, e emails. I want to uh, cell phone calls. I want to thank you for your time, and and, and uh, I appreciate it. We thank the people of Canada for their prayers uh, on this very sad occasion. All right, thank you, Mayor.